Hello out there to you. In this problem, we're going to do a Stackelberg duopoly problem, usually an intermediate microeconomics pro type problem. Uh, but what that means is we've got a duopoly where there's two firms in the in the market or in the industry, and one firm's going to get to pick their quantity first, and the other firm has to has to respond to whatever that quantity is, and then we solve for price and and uh, profit and all of that. Okay, so. Uh, in this case, we've got a um, uh, cost function of this for both firms, and then we've got this as a demand function. So the Stackelberg problems are pretty long. Uh, if you're also solving with Cournot in the same problem and comparing it to it or with a monopoly and making a comparison, um, you can skip some of the steps, but um, I'm just going to go start to finish on Stackelberg because it tends to be uh, sometimes obscure, sometimes harder to do. So both firms cost function. So what I want to do is uh, first get a reaction function, which is found by finding marginal revenue for the first firm, equaling its marginal cost, and then it like solves for whatever the quantity is uh, of the first firm based on what the second firm should do, and then vice versa. You need to find marginal revenue for the second firm, set that equal to marginal cost for the second firm, and that'll tell you what firm two should do based on what firm one uh, is up to. So uh, the cost functions, these can also be written like this. So this is equivalent to saying this. Um, and for both firms, like if this was firm one, then that would be quantity one. And if this was firm two, that would be quantity two. Um, just take the partial derivative of both functions. So that would be four uh, just four for firm one. And then if you were writing it out everything, that would also be four. You don't really need to because they're the same. Now, if they were different, just uh, insert a different, uh, whatever the different marginal cost is for the different firm, okay, whether it's firm one or firm two. Uh, I also need to recognize over here that large Q is for the whole market and large Q is going to be made up of quantities from firm one and quantities from firm two. So I have to add those together. Um, all right, so first thing, and, and since the firms are identical, they're going to have the same reaction function, so we can kind of skip a little bit of steps there. Okay, so I want total revenue for the first firm, and what that's going to be is price times quantity one. Okay, so take this whole, this whole function right here, total revenue, and it's 200 times quantity one plus, uh, and then it's it's this whole thing. Actually, not, not plus in this case. It's going to be minus because that's what the function says there. So 0 0.5, which I'm going to start writing as 1 half just because it's easier. Uh, and then Q1 plus Q2. But then also multiplied by Q1. I think alternatively, I could have put right here, I could have put this as 1 half Q1 instead of putting it over there. But either way, um, you're going to get the same answer. All right, so here we go. Total revenue, 200 Q1 minus uh, 1 half Q1 times Q1. So that would be 1 half Q1 squared. OK, the annoying part about these problems, well, there's a lot of things that are annoying. But we've got Q subscript 1 denoting quantity 1, and then it's squared because we're doing it twice. So you got to be real careful when you're drawing these things. That's why I'm drawing it out. Um, you may even see me make a mistake. Hopefully not. But um, you know that that's the process that you want to do. Um, okay. So then minus one half Q. It doesn't matter the order. Q2, Q1, or Q1, Q2. It doesn't matter. Okay. Now I want marginal revenue. With res this is a partial derivative with respect to quantity one. So I go 200 minus Q1, because that becomes Q1, minus 1 half Q2. All right, great. Now I've got this. Now I want to set this. Uh, they're going to do this process, get the reaction function. So set those equal to each other. So I've got uh, marginal revenue is that function there. And then I'm going to set that equal to 4. So 4 is the marginal cost. 200 minus Q1 minus 1 half Q2. Do some rearranging here. Q1, 196 minus 1 half 
Q2. That's the best response function for firm one. And then because firm two is identical, it would be 196 minus one half Q1 for firm two. So that's important that we know both of those. And if we were doing Cournot, then this is, you may have already done this part. Okay, so you can kind of skip a, skip, skip a step there. But here's our two reaction functions. Um, if the marginal cost was different for like firm two, then we would have just done this process here, um, not this process, this process here, but with a different marginal cost. But we don't need to do that. So, Okay, so now I've got the two reaction functions and firm one gets to choose first. So I'm going to consider a demand function where uh, firm one says, uh, what's the demand like if, if I, what, based on what I pick and based on what the other firm picks. So it's standard starts out the same there, then one half, and we're going to say, what about us? And then we're going to plug in the best response function from the other firm into there. We're going to see what they're going to do based on what we're going to do. So mathematically, this works out. For proofs, you can see one of the long uh, maybe exciting videos that use uh, exponents all over the place, but I, you know, I'm more concrete. All right, so now I've just plugged in response function into the demand function, and I'm going to solve for um, a simpler thing that then I can maximize on. Okay, so 200 minus one half Q1 minus. 98 plus 1 fourth Q1. Simplify even further. You get 102 minus 1 fourth Q1. Now I want um, total revenue for this function. Okay, so for for this firm, it would be 102Q1 minus 1 fourth Q1 squared. Marginal revenue for the first firm, the, uh, the first mover, I suppose we could say. Uh, then 1 half Q, whoop, Q2, see? It's easy to make a mistake, Q1. Okay, so this is marginal revenue. And now I want to set this equal to our marginal cost function. So that was four. So 102 minus one half Q1. And we'll rearrange a little further. One half Q1. It's a one equals 98. And then Q1 is 196. So this is the quantity that Q1 is going to produce. Next thing, we just need to plug this into uh, firm 2's reaction function to see how they react. That's why it works. So it's 196 minus 1 half 196. See a lot of coincidental numbers in these things because they turn out kind of smoothly. So that should be 98. Uh, so firm 2 should um, should produce 98 units. And this is the market. So big Q, back to big Q, is firm one. So firm one, 196 plus whatever firm two is up to, which is 98. This, this makes economic sense. Firm one's going to take more of the market. Not all of it, but they're going to take more of it. Um, and then we add those together and we get a total output of 294, which I can plug into my original uh, demand function. So let's figure out the price. So the price in this market is going to be 200 minus 1 half 294. And pull up the calculator on that. One forty seven and that's a negative. Add that to two hundred. We get a price of fifty three. Okay. So we've solved this whole thing. So price is fifty three. 
big quantity, 294. Q1, 196. Q2, 98. That's our answer. If we wanted to know profit, we could take uh, quantity times price. No, uh, quantity, let's do that purple here. Quantity times price for firm one, and then subtract that by marginal cost times uh, quantity, or just plug in 196 into the cost function. Find the difference, and that's firm one's uh, profit. Firm two's profit is the same thing. So we take 98, and we multiply it by 53. That's our total revenue. And then take 98 times 4. That's our total cost. Find the difference there, and that's how they, they get it. So you can compare that to your Corno output. You can compare it to um, Bertrand. If you did have a Bertrand um, question, this is really easy if they ask you to, to just jump, cut to the chase. Um, Bertrand is just price equals marginal cost because they're going to get in a price war. So in that case, price would just be four. Okay, so that's the little... Bertrand bonus where they're choosing prices. Okay, there you go.